Okay, so I think I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Kristen Evangelista. I'm the director of the William Patterson University Galleries. Um, thank you for joining us for this virtual arts education workshop. I'm going to describe the format of today's event. Uh, first, we are gonna discuss the book, New Kid by Jerry Craft. The discussion will be about 10 minutes. Um, we have some really fun trivia questions for you. Uh, then we're going to learn about an artwork from the permanent collection of the William Patterson University Galleries, and um, we'll be working on an art activity to make a self-portrait mask. Um, the art program will run about 30 minutes, um, and um, we um, allotted until 4.45, but we may stay a little bit longer because um, once you get into making those, those masks, it's hard to stop. Um, so if you need to leave at 4.45, um, that's okay. Um, but if you get really inspired, um, feel free to stick around for about another 10 or 15 minutes. Um, so all the participants will be muted during this event. We encourage you to use the chat box or the question box to ask any questions, especially if you have any technical difficulties. Um, we, are, we think we've worked out all the kinks. Um, but please keep us posted if you have any issues with the um, screen sharing. Um, I'd like to briefly thank all of those who made this event possible. Um, I'd first like to start with the gallery staff, um, Emily Johnson and Taylor Cassisi, um, who have helped a lot, especially with the kits, which hopefully you've received. Um, I um, want to thank um, the librarians who are with us today, um, Linda Bellin, and Melissa Dunn, um, and the support of all the other youth services librarians who have helped promote this event to so many different um, libraries, patrons, families um, in the PALS Plus network. Um, last but not least, I'm grateful to our arts educator, Nadia Estella, um, for conceiving of this workshop um, and for um, being um, such a great workshop leader. We're so grateful for her expertise. Um, so um, next, we're going to start our program, and I'm going to first introduce our librarians who are going to lead the discussion of Jerry Craft's book. Today, we are joined by Linda Bellin, who's from the Children's Services Department at the Little Falls Library, and Melissa Dunn, who's from the Youth Services Department at the Wayne Public Library. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for coming. So I'm Melissa from the Wayne Public Library. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about the book that inspired today's activity, which is New Kid by Jerry Craft. So this is a graphic novel, and I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the story and then some of the themes. Um, maybe some of you have read it, but if not, it's a really great book, so I hope you'll be inspired to read it after today. So New Kid tells the story of seventh grader Jordan Banks, who is starting his first year at a new school. Jordan loves art and he wants to go to art school, but his mom thinks art school would be a waste of time and she wants him to focus on his academics. At his new school, Jordan must navigate many challenges, including making new friends and trying to fit in, even though he's one, his school is not very diverse and he's one of the only kids of color in the, in the whole school. He faces down a bully named Andy who teases and stereotypes Jordan and his friend Drew, as well as teachers who can't remember their names. Jordan is constantly forced to change his identity as a young person of color to try and fit into his surroundings. And I think Nadia mentioned this in the last uh, workshop that we had, the idea of code switching, where Jordan is always, ha always having to change his identity when he goes from his neighborhood to his school, when he's with his school friends, his neighborhood friends. And there's many themes in this book, and some of the themes are growing up, making friends, the idea of class, you have the scholarship kids like Jordan and then the kids who are really, really wealthy. There's also uh, the theme of identity, race, and self-expression. And I really loved reading this book. I found it funny in parts and it really made me think. There's so many things in the book to really make you think. And I think that we can all relate to changing or trying to change our true selves to try to fit in, maybe to try to fit in with your friends or to impress somebody. And our activity today, where we're going to be making the masks, is going to help us to express who we really are, like Jordan tries to do in the book. And I just want to give a plug. If you like the book, this one, you might also like the follow-up, which is called Class Act. And this book features Jordan again and also his friend, Drew. 
So now I'm going to pass it along to Linda Ballin from Little Falls, who's going to tell you a little bit more about the book and about the author. Okay, thank you, Melissa. Again, my name is Linda Bellin from Little Falls Public Library. And um, I have to confess that I had a hard time getting started with this book. I did not grow up reading graphic novels or comics, so I found it a little difficult to read. But once I got into the book, I absolutely loved it. And I zoomed right through the book. And yes, Melissa, I'm going to go on to read the class act. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about Jerry Kraft, the author. Jerry Kraft grew up in New York City. He wanted to go to art school, but ended up at a, at a private prestigious school of his mother's choosing. Okay. If those of you who read the book, does this sound familiar? Now, that's right. The book is somewhat autobiographical. So a lot of uh, Jer Jerry put um, his self right into the middle of that book. Now, I want to share some fun facts about Jerry Craft with you. He started his career as a cartoonist for Marvel. Doesn't that sound like an ideal job? And then he developed his own comic strip. It was titled, entitled Mama's Boys, and that's boys with a Z at the end. And the Wimpy Kid books, and I know probably or all you kids have read at least one of the in the series, uh, that those books were the inspiration for the writing of his book. And he is the co-founder of the prestigious Schomburg's annual Black Comic Book Festival. And lastly, this book, The New Kid, was the first graphic novel ever to win a Newbery Medal. And I think that's, that's really awesome. And it deserved it. It was a really good book. Uh, he's received a lot of other awards also. So with that said, let's do some new kid trivia. This is great for kids who have read the book. And if you haven't read the book, maybe you can guess by some of the stuff Melissa said and maybe what I said too. So if we could go through the trivia, here we go. And just pick out your answers. Jordan's new school, Rivers, Riversdale Academy Day School is located in what section in New York City? Jordan expresses himself by the titles of the chapter in New Kid were all inspired by the titles of other. Jordan imagines himself as which superhero? And what color shorts does Jordan receive for Christmas from a classmate? And now we're asking you to please rate this book. Those of you who read it. And we'll see what answers we come up with when you once you voted. Okay. And you can see that Kristen put uh, in the chat a link for the survey at the end. Okay, did everybody vote? Can we see the answers? Okay, ah, Washington Heights, that's the correct answer. That's where Riversdale Academy Day School is located. And Jordan expresses himself by drawing cartoons about his life. Okay. The titles of the chapters in New Kid are inspired by the titles of, and it's books. So this one's not TV shows. The next one, the class act is movies, I think. Uh, but this one is books. And Jordan does imagine himself as which superhero? Batman, that is right. And what color shorts does Jordan receive for Christmas from a classmate? It's, la it's uh, not lime green, it's salmon. That's the school color, salmon. At first he said pink, but his classmates corrected him and said it's salmon. And rate this book? Okay, really liked it. One person answered, okay. I, and I absolutely loved it. Great, thank you, for, thank you for participating in the survey, in our trivia questions. So I guess, Nadia, it's, it's yours, it's up to you now. 
Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you, Linda and Melissa, for that, um, for that, for those fun questions and introducing us to such a wonderful book. Um, I am going to take this part time to introduce you to one of the artworks currently in the permanent collection of William Patterson University. It is called Runaway Girls, and it is part of the weight of the body. Um, so. Just give me one second. I'm just going to rename. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to share my screen. And here is a Runaway Girl. So this is an, what we call an artist book. An artist book is um, it's normally has limited editions. In this case, for Runaway Girls by Rob, Robin Kahn, who is the, um, the artist, and Sarah Blake, she is a poet and also an author. They collaborated in this project with um, for this book called Runaway Girls. There's a total of 100 um, editions of this book. And out of those 100, they, they, were, um, they were a selected 25 that had additional images and then 75 that included um, that in, the, in additional 75. In this particular one, if you look at the, at the bottom left corner where the um, artist signatures are on the left hand side and then you have 16 out of 75 so what that indicates to us is that um part of the permanent collection is 16 out of the 75 books um even though it's so and then the other 25 would be one out of 25 which total 100 books and here one of the things i wanted to show you when you um is when we talk about books like the new kid, right? We sit at home, we, um, we can, there's a connection. And this is one of the beautiful things about um, artist books is that when you walk into a gallery, you're assuming to have to just walk in and look at works of art that are directly on the wall. But with an artist book, there's a certain um, like care and intimacy that happens because you're looking at it. You're only able to look at this this um, this this work one at a time, right? So you won't be able to have ten people look at it, but one person at a time, and really open and look at the care. Normally, when you go into a gallery and they have artist books, they allow you to use gloves or um, or display it in a way that maybe one of the pages is highlighted. And here, this is one of the pages in which it's a type of printing. It's, um, I believe this might be lino cut. There's also this idea of layering that is, happens a lot in artist books. And, and in here, you kind of see that maybe there were um, at least three to four layers. You have the yellow, you have the red outline of what appears to be like a foot. And, um, but always the last, the last layer, just like the different layers of Jordan is, um, it's always comes in different layers, right? So one of the things that I really enjoyed about thinking about this work of art and thinking about the new kid was this like idea of superpowers, right? And these ideas of the way that like, um, Melissa mentioned of code switching, right? Of the way that, um, you know, our, we ourselves are not just one person. I am an artist, I'm also a mom. I really love to cook. I love to um, garden in all sorts of plants all over. You see behind me, I actually went to the botanical gardens in New York and I was so immersed in all the um, plants that I, 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 I decided to paint um, a saber tree. So, you know, all, all these different things, whether you like sports or you like to read or write, are the things that um, encompass who we are. And we tend to, if we are going to go play soccer, we wear our kilts, uh, not a kilt, oh my goodness, our, um, 
cleats, that's what I like to say, our cleats and our shin guards, right? Because we're going to go and we arm ourselves with these almost costumes to go outside. Or if we go to a, um, we're going to go to a wedding, we decide that we're going to wear either a, a beautiful dress or um or I'm going to pin up my hair a certain way. So it's a certain ways in which we kind of pivot. Or when we go swimming, we wear our swimsuits, right? Rather than um, our, our everyday jeans, right? So it's all the different ways that we, we change and we shift. Um, here, I am showing you an example of one of the printing techniques that happens in Runaway Girls. This is an etching. So essentially you would have a, a um, a piece of plexiglass, um, and you would you would scratch into it, place ink on it, remove the ink from the surface in order to then um, have a clean plate. But once you place both the um, the plate and the and the piece of paper and roll it through the press. Um, you will have a unique image. And again, going back to the editions of an artist book, the reason there is limited amount of editions in an artist book is because when you run that plate through the um, uh, letterpress, it will, with time, that pressure, those lines that you might see in the first two or um, really clear lines, those tend to the quality of the image maybe by the 200th time won't be as clear. Um, this is another type of printing, which is um, silk screen, and it kind of works the same way, And but it's more based on photograph. Um, and often our t-shirts, the way that they are made is through a silk screen process, which goes through um, a photograph, then you put it through a, um, a mesh, and that mesh is, um, the, the colors are placed down. So in this particular silk screen, you would have the yellow, the um, maybe the back, the paper is white, so you wouldn't need to add the white, but then the orange and the, um, not the orange, the pink and the brown, but always the last layer of silk screen tends to be black because it dominates and it's often, often the, the outline. The same thing happens here with a wood block. Um, you would have um, the yellow first onto the paper. So all the leaves would have been colored in um, on another plate with negatives of leaves. And then the last one would be the black with all the details and outlines to extract an image. Um, so here, so we're going, we're, 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 we're at the point of this idea of layering and all the different things that um, create us. And I love this one because, you know, it, it references Batman, like Jordan, who he, at some point, he says, I am Batman as he's traveling from um, Washington, from Washington Heights to the other part of, I, I believe it's also Washington Heights, but he does have to take the, 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 um, the bus, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, I don't remember quite yet, but I do remember that he has to commute and the layers that he sheds in the, in the bus is something to, read, to watch out for if you haven't read the book just yet. And here again, you know, we, 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 when we think of superheroes, we, are, we go into this fantastical realm of what superheroes are. And the truth is that they're right, net, we live amongst superheroes every day, whether it's a firefighter or a doctor or your parents who are at home with you or, you know, your neighbor next door it who might teach you how to bounce a basketball or you know and, and and it's really tough especially right now with masks right so we have to wear a mask literally now like never before literally leave your house with a mask um for protection and also for um so so that said it's this idea that we all have like things that make us special. And also the idea that now more than ever is a different way of thinking about how masks, um, how masks can translate into our everyday life, right? So um, here are some examples. And over here where I have my new kid book and also um, I have a couple of other examples from other. Um, and then, 
So here, you know, when I think, as I mentioned to you, I really, really love, love plants, right? So it's something that I truly enjoy. I grow tomatoes and I see now that the sun is shining. I'm super, 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 super excited that spring is around the corner, especially right after all these like really snowy days, which are fun in themselves. You know, I know that a lot of us have gone snow tubing, especially um, since the, but I think that when spring comes and it's, it's just for me personally, is such a special thing. So, um, I, so, in, and another thing is that I really enjoy mathematics. So in here you see the two different masks that I created in, and, um, but for list of materials, we are going to be using um, the cardstock, scissors, color pencils. So I'm gonna move these out of the way. And so we have our cardstock here, color pencils, tape, we have our paper straws and some stickers and obviously our colored pencils that have been writing here. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to begin my craft. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to fold our, um, we're going to fold our paper in half like so. So make sure all those four corners meet. And then we're just going to push down to create that crease. Then you're going to open and you're going to crease it one more time. You can definitely use your scissor to cut it. So now we're going to have our, our crease right here in the middle. You can go ahead and cut it, but I'm going to just hold on to that top and just pull down and that should release your paper. Now I have my two pieces of paper here for my mask. The next thing we're going to do is once again, get have those four points meet. We're gonna have those four points meet and then we're going to fold, okay? After that, we're going to go ahead and open our piece of paper. So it looks kind of like a book, right? And we're going to fold in to that crease, our right-hand side first, and then we're going to go ahead and fold our one more time and create a crease on our left hand side. So right now it should look like a small little book. And what I want you to do is hold that middle crease and push it back like so. So just so you guys can see that again, I have my book here. I'm gonna just push. So it kind of looks like a W and you're gonna have that crease facing you right now. Now I have my um, my crease here, I'm gonna just sh shift it to my right like so. And I'm going to create a semicircle. Oh, my circle's a little, yeah, I'm gonna create a semicircle. That's, there we go. I'm gonna use this semicircle as a guide. So again, I have that crease right here on my right hand side and I'm going to hold my whole paper down and I'm going to cut that semicircle I just made. Use that as a guide. It doesn't have to be perfect, but and look at that. When we open it, we have the beginnings of what could look like a mask, right? So then with that, I'm going to, okay, open up. So here is my, here's my mask. Actually, we have our second mask too. Where is it? Oh, here it goes. Let's fold that quickly. So we're gonna fold that again. Open up like a book. I'm gonna fold into the crease on the right-hand side and fold again into the crease on the left-hand side. Then we're going to lift it up, push our crease forward so that is facing me now. And I'm going to go ahead and draw that semicircle. Use the semicircle to cut out, I'm gonna make this a little bigger, um, to cut out the hole on my second mask. So guess what? I have my two masks. I'm gonna make this a little bit 
bigger. Here. So here we go, one, and then we have a second one here. Now, this next thing I would like you to do is to fold your mask like so. So those four creases, four corners are touching each other. And on the left-hand side, I'm going to cut where my nose would go. So my, I'm gonna make that pretty big, that, that right triangle, like so, you guys can see that. And I'm going to, see, there we go. It has the beginning of, of our masks. So, um, and then here, I'm also going to cut the top. Like I mentioned to you guys before, I really, really enjoy plants. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to start drawing some vines. And this is, you know, think of it as something, something um, like it, sh it should, this should be something fun, essentially is what I'm trying to get at. I want you guys to just think about maybe if you like flowers, maybe you want to draw some flowers. I know that I'm drawing vines, but it's not, it doesn't necessarily have to be what you guys draw. If you guys are into soccer or into um, my daughter, she loves um, all things constellations. So she has stars all over her room and knows all these random facts about planets. Maybe that's something you want to do, add some stars or um, some nice little Saturns or planet Earth. My, uh, my, I have another um, friend of mine really enjoys dinosaurs. So maybe you wanna do some dinosaurs. So I'm gonna continue with my vines on this side. And you see how I'm kind of the way that the design that I'm particularly creating, I'm really, my main focus is my eyes, right? So I really wanna make sure that I put something down that really highlights my eyes. So I'm, but you know, you wanna make sure that you, you decorate in such a way to distract from your true identity, right? <laughs> Thinking about Batman and how he, um, but that's not what we're doing here. We actually want to tell people that we are a uh, plant-loving superhero or a, um, let's see, I said stars or dinosaurs. So we want to tell people about ourselves. We don't want to hide. One of the beautiful parts of um, the new kid was when he was speaking to his grandfather and he said that he didn't need to choose between his friends and that it's like when you go out to having Chinese food. I love that part. He's like, sometimes you have lo mein, sometimes you have, I think it was beef like peppers and beef or something. I don't remember quite the the dish, but he's like, you know, um, this analogy of thinking about like um, foods and the things that we really love, it could be the same, you know? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead. I, I like what's going on, but I think that the shape on this one for me particularly is too geometric. So what I'm gonna do, I wanna mimic a little bit um, what a leaf would look like. So I'm going to do that with, by cutting one of the sides of my mask into kind of like a leaf. And the best way to make sure that both sides look the same is essentially you want to fold it you see how it's open like that? You can fold it, use that crease as your, as like a little bit of a, a helper there. And you can just cut right up like that. Just like you did with the semicircle, right? 
So here I have my plant here. And then I I know you guys, some of you have had stickers. I wanna, I see, I found a little carrot here. So I'm gonna put a carrot on mine. And since I keep talking about stars, I'm also going to go ahead and put some, mm, actually, no, I'm not. I am going to draw some more on this. Actually, I'm gonna draw some more. I wanna really focus on those eyes. So I'm gonna just draw a little bit here to focus on those eyes. And I'm gonna add some, use my, um, so I'm essentially highlighting, right? I'm pressing down on my color pencil to make it darker. And I am going to use my other color pencil. I'm gonna draw some flowers. And again, I know you guys are probably not taking as long as I am. No need to worry. And the nice thing about this too is that as we are currently in a time that we're constantly in front of the screen, like we are right now, but we're not necessarily using our hands, right? We're typing away or we're speaking into the, this is a nice way to engage another part of our brain, you know? So there goes my first mask. Um, I'm really not a fan of this sticker, so I'm gonna take it off. So again, and so there was my first mask when I decided to put, um, so then the other thing that I really, 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 really love is, is math. I do love math, but I've done a couple of those already. And I, I, I think, you know, I'm going to do the one about my daughter when I said she really likes um, stars and um, in the constellation. So I'm going to do this one for her. So I'm going to use my color pencil. I'm going to ch change it just a little bit here. And I am going to do some stars. I'm going to just decorate my whole thing with stars now. She'll be so excited. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a lot of stars in here. I feel like this is very science-based today, thinking about the universe and thinking about, um, you know, plant life. And it also, I mean, like I said, I do, I love math. As a kid, I thought I was going to be a mathematician. And it's funny because my artwork now, there's a lot of measuring and precision in the, in the things that I make. So I kind of still am practicing all my math all the time. I am going to make it look like the solar system. Nadia, just a heads up, it's 4.35. Oh. Yay. Time flies when you're having fun. So I'm kind of doing like the rings. And again, these don't have, it doesn't have to be, um, Absolutely perfect. I'm going to draw some planets, maybe.
I'm limited with colors, but that's okay. And then I'm going to grab my stickers. I forgot to actually cut my second mask, but that's okay. So what I'm gonna do, since we have a lot of stars in here, I'm going to kind of make this into a star. So I'm gonna cut into it like so, to kind of make it look like it's, it's exploding, like an exploding star. So again, if I hold my mask, <clears throat> You can make sure that those cuts are on both sides pretty even. I hope you guys are enjoying yourselves as we almost come to a close to this. So I have here all my different rays of light coming out from my little galaxy that I made here. And then I have some stickers that I'm going to add. I have here a star, another star. I'm gonna put that on there. I have another one here I'm going to add. And then I'm going to just decorate it. With all these, I have all these stickers that kind of look like stars. I hope you guys are enjoying yourselves today. If you can go outside, please do so. It is stunningly beautiful. Um, and I am also going to just like I did with that other mask, you see how I highlighted the eyes. I want to do that to this one as well. I'm going to highlight the eyes a little bit as the last touch on this one. One thing you guys can also do and try to, with the colored pencils, if you grab a Q-tip, especially since you're using cardstock, which is nice and heavy, you can go ahead and use like a damp Q-tip to moisten, like it kind of behaves a little bit like um, watercolors. You don't want to put a lot, that's why I said a Q-tip to kind of run a little bit of the color. And then the last thing we're going to do is on the side of our mask, you could place a straw if you like, you can put the tape over it and then you'll be able to hold it up like so. I don't have tape with me right now, but this is what kind of like what it looks like. I'm like, wait, my, right here. And then the same thing goes for, so here's my universe kind of galactic um, mask and this one as well. I hope you guys enjoyed yourself. And um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nadia. That was really wonderful. I love the masks that you made. Uh, they're beautiful. Um, I hope um, the participants um, enjoyed this workshop. 
Uh, we are encouraging you to share pictures of the masks that you made. Um, we could post them on social media, on Instagram or Facebook. Um, so we'll put the link, um, the email address um, where you could share your pictures of your masks um, with us. Um, there's also a link um, for um, you to um, complete a survey. We welcome your feedback on these workshops, um, which are a pilot program. Um, but I want to thank um, Nadia uh, for leading the art activity and Melissa and Linda for being with us to tell us more about the book and the, the trivia questions. Today, our participants got a really good job on those trivia questions. Um, I was impressed. Um, so um, I want to thank you for being with us. Um, and we are um, hoping to continue these workshops. Um, and um, we'll be sending out more information to the libraries about uh, future workshops. But I hope everyone has a wonderful afternoon. Thanks again. Thank you.